Hello Geneva and welcome to Officially Speaking. I'm your host Kevin Starr. Each month we sit down with one of our local elected officials to discuss the business that happens right here in these council chambers. Today we're joined by 5th Ward Alderman Craig Maladra. Craig, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off by telling our viewers a little bit about your background. I know you've been involved with the community for many years. Um, okay, so I've always thought that uh, community service is it's what makes America work. Uh, we don't learn to understand each other sitting in front of the TV watching American Idol or something. You get to understand something, I'm not sure what. So you gotta turn the TV off and you gotta go out your front door and see where it takes you. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, I started getting involved when we bought our first home in Wheaton. Um, I was on a housing commission and on the library board. And we moved to Geneva in 96, and three months later they started a community-wide strategic planning effort. I was lucky enough to get involved with that. Um, and eventually I was on SPAC and then the library board and now the city council. It's just, it's what we do. You were elected to city council in 2003. During your tenure, how do you think Geneva has grown or changed throughout the years? <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting 10 years. Um, in the beginning, so I, I came on board during a period of tremendous growth, uh, commercial, industrial, residential, the whole thing. Um, with that growth came a tremendous sense of optimism. Also, I think an undercurrent of concern, concern that maybe we were growing and changing so fast that we would lose whatever it is that makes us unique. So we started working on planning for the future. Um, I mentioned the strategic plan, a big community effort to develop that in 96, adopted in 97. Um, I came on board here in 03, we updated the comprehensive plan, created a bike pedestrian plan, planning, 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 basically um, defining a vision for the type of community we want to be in the future. And that future was quite rosy. Then 2008, uh, the clouds started coming in. And I would say our focus since then has been, you know, how do you weather the storm that's the financial crisis? How do you deal with this thing that I call the new normal, the post-storm world? And then also, how do you deal with the recognition that we can't rely on growth to fuel the economic engine like we used to be able to? And that would have happened, financial crisis or not. That was coming because we're approaching build out. Um, so these things cause you to question your assumptions about your vision. And um, personally, uh, I feel that we weathered that storm quite well. Um, and I feel that the vision itself stood up quite well. Craig, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the issues that are important to your fifth ward constituents? Uh, um, well, I'll start with East State Street. We have to improve things on East State Street. <laughs> we have to improve the street. We have to improve the streetscape. Um, I think we have to unleash the economic power that exists out there. Uh, so that would be one. Uh, the downtown, the vitality of the downtown is, is a concern to the whole community, but it's a concern to the fifth ward especially. Um, we have the downtown master plan to provide guidelines. So uh, as change comes, we can refer to that and try and ensure that change only enhances what we have. Um, we're also looking at other tools, you know, a potential TIF or a business district. Um, we're looking at potential changes on Route 31, roughly between Fabian Parkway and Third Street, um, if we can do it. Uh, this would improve the aesthetics of that gateway into the city. It would calm traffic, uh, improve safety. The if, uh, we still have to do engineering, see if it's physically possible. And uh, when it's proven to be physically possible, we still have to get IDOT to work with us. Um, and then lastly, I think there's uh, homes for a changing region. Um, we have to recognize that the demand for housing going forward is gonna be different than the demand we've seen so far. Boomers are aging, not me, everybody else. Um, young people are looking to start their first homes. Um, 
So the demand as we move forward is going to be very different than the demand we've seen up to this point. Uh, we're partnering with neighboring communities on developing a plan for mixed housing to meet the needs of current and future residents. So I think uh, those are probably the big ones. Geneva was recently named one of the safest communities in the state. What factors do you think contributed to that type of recognition? Uh, my wife got me to behave myself. <laughs> um, you know, recognition like that or any success that we have, we have because we work together. Um, I don't mean to diminish the importance of the police department. Uh, they're great, the fire department's great, public works is great, the whole city staff is great, but um, quality of life is something that can't be achieved by city staff and elected officials alone. Uh, personally, I think Geneva works because our businessmen, our residents are as committed and as involved as elected officials and city staff are. It's unique that way. Alderman have been holding monthly meet and greets with our residents and business community. What benefits have you found from these sessions? I'll, I think it's a benefit whenever I get to meet with constituents. Um, the success of the sessions, ours was, I would say, relatively sparsely attended. Um, we've had meetings about issues, specific issues, that affect the Fifth Ward and 50, 60 people turn out. The meet and greet, we had you know, just a handful. But I think that that's because it's early. I think that word needs to get out. I think we need to have find our rhythm, uh, how we want to approach these. Um, in the Fifth Ward, it's particularly uh, tricky because we have constituents that are businessmen. I mean, all wards have businessmen, but you know, we'll have downtown business owners, we'll have residents show up, we'll have merchants and restaurant owners. All of them have different concerns, different things they'd like to talk about. So we need, we need a few more to get in the swing of things, I think. Home rule has been on the list of the city strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Where is the city on this issue and what are the next steps? I'll start with where I am on the issue and move into next steps. So home rule is one of the most important things I think we could do. Uh, it's been a, an issue of mine since I got elected in 03. Um, I just don't think non-home rule communities have the tools to deal with the challenges that we're going to face going forward. Um, a lot of people, I'm afraid, are going to focus on the taxing authority that comes with home rule. I personally favor a thing that's being talked about at the state level called home rule light, uh, where they would, they would give to municipalities all the powers that home rule affords, save for the taxing authority. Uh, my focus is on the regulatory capabilities. Um, Non-home rural communities are not equipped to deal with increases in rental properties, increases in absentee ownership, and increases in infill development. Uh, Non-home rural community can't pass safe housing acts like our neighbors to the north and south did, like Carroll Stream is considering doing today. Non-home non rural communities can't license landlords. Uh, they can't license contractors and developers. These are all these are all things I think that a community that's reached build out is going to need to rely on going forward. Uh, where we stand in 2006, I think it was Alderman Vogelsberg and I uh, led a task force to study the issue. Oh, I have to back up a second. Not not tape wise, but conceptually. Um, Home rule comes with population when you reach 25,000. If you don't reach 25,000, you can become home rule community by referendum. So in 2006, we did a we had a task force that studied whether or not we should float a referendum. Um, during that exercise, we learned an awful lot about home rule, about the opinions and feelings in the community about it. Uh, I believe the current council would like to hear what what that task force. Uh, learned and discovered and based on that then take the next step learn more about it things like that craig what issues have been discussed at city council recently or maybe coming down the pipeline in the near future do you think our viewers might be interested in learning about um well one is there's a, a potential development or there's a development being talked about in the first ward on the former Citron property uh, that I think has the potential to change things uh, in a good way or a bad way. We have to see. Um, 
Its uh, benefits would be that it's bringing residences into the city, into the downtown, which is something we've wanted to do for a long time. It's perhaps the stimulus that'll spur growth of the downtown out to Anderson Boulevard, which is another thing that some of us would like to see. Uh, its challenge, though, is that it's, it's just a big, I would say, massive development. And, um, you know, I think all the time about what makes our downtown a success where others struggle. Uh, and, and my personal take is that it's a matter of scale. I think people are comfortable in Geneva. I think they, they come, they get out of their car, and they feel at home here. Uh, we're not so small as to be uninteresting. We're not so big as to be intimidating and noisy. Uh, we're like the just right uh, of the three. And if we're not careful, uh, we could blow that. So with this one, I want to watch how it comes together. Not so much in terms of absolute measures like height and, and setbacks, but in, in terms of ratios. How does, it, how does it fit with neighboring properties? How does it fit in the neighborhood? And how does it change the scale of the downtown? Uh, so that would be one. And then another big issue I alluded to earlier, and the council hasn't really talked about it directly, but we face it in every uh, financial discussion we have, is the fact that we just aren't going to experience the growth engine that we used to have. And how do we continue to provide to our residents the quality of service they've come to expect um, without that economic engine? Can you discuss with us your future plans? Do you plan to seek another term when your seat expires next year? Uh, I'll, do what I, I'll do what I always do. I'll, I'll check with the family. I'll check with the office. I'll check with the mayor. I'll uh, check with some constituents who I trust to give me honest feedback. Um, you know, the fact that I like the job is only one part of the decision. And then we'll see what they have to say and then decide what I want to do just mentioned a lot of responsibilities that you have even outside the city council. How do you balance that life and work experience with your uh, role here on, with the city? Uh, I do as well as I can. It's not easy. Um, I work for Northern Trust in downtown Chicago. It's a, it's a benefit and it's a, a detriment. The detriment is the distance. It's hard to attend meetings during normal business hours. Uh, fortunately, most of our residents work, and they also can't attend meetings during normal business hours. So people are more than happy to meet with me and on the evening or Saturday mornings. I stay away from Sundays. Um, so I'm lucky, you know, my wife doesn't mind, the kids aren't embarrassed, and Northern Trust actually values community service among their employees. They encourage it. That's all the time we have for Officially Speaking. I'd like to thank Alderman Maladra for his time and insight <laughs> into the City Council. We also thank you for watching. We hope to tune in again next month as you get the official word from your City Council. Thank you.